So you can see the very distinctive horseshoe. I'm just going to jump out to show you clearly which one exactly and which direction they're pointing in. Which one are you? Oh, yeah. Next one. Next one. one. That one there. Uh, so the track here, the horseshoe is in that direction. And if you go to the next one down, can you? You'll also see, again, heading in this direction, a very small depression at the front of the toe as it would have pushed forward. So that's one of the easier tracks. And again, just useful for us to know where the animals are moving and where they've come from. Well, myself and Brian hang around here in the hope of a leopard's arrival. Let's head on to Mark and see how his morning's coming along, and we'll catch up with you a little bit later. Hi, welcome back. And once again, fairly good timing, because I've just found something. We're at a quite an important junction. It's a junction on Gowrie Main. we south of Treehouse Dam. And we're on this junction where Bum Road where it comes onto Gowrie Main and this little Gowrie entrance and their leopard track that I'm sure either Newman or Quarantine Mail. I'm going to see if I can show you the tracks. Hyena tracks following it. So let me go forward a little bit. And then try and go forward. I'm going to go backwards to go forwards. I'm going to turn and angle the vehicle so that we can show you the track. between the two as yet and then just a little bit closer are the tracks of a hyena that are about the same age as the leopard tracks there you can see the hyena tracks almost parallel and I'm guessing that maybe the hyena was following the leopard so I was on the way to Arethusa but I think now that we've got one of our cats coming back onto Gari. I think let's see if we can find something. The lion tracks that I had crossed over, I've mentioned it, I think, crossed over onto Little Gari. Let's see if we can see where this cat went.
confident since he's on the road and he's heading towards the dam he's clearly making his way from one area to another and unless there was something here like a daker or a steenbuck or a parlor that he went after my guess is there i can see his tracks now so heading straight so we're going to try and jump the gun a bit instead of following each and every footprint i'm going to take the general direction and the next time we're going to check where he went is when we get close to the dam and around the dam wall and the roads leading away from the dam if he's not lying up next to the water should we hold our thumbs cross our fingers and knock on wood and all those other things look at this yeah you can see these tracks very clearly in this morning light just up ahead in the right hand side of the road because now I can focus on trying to find that leopard. You may need to jump on and off the vehicle. And you can stay with us because we know it's just a matter of seconds until Karula pops out. Now this is the leopard we've been waiting for. It is indeed Karula. He's a female leopard whose territory encompasses Juma. But we haven't seen very much of her recently. And it's probably been well over a week that we saw her. And we've just got a glimpse of Aubrey in his vehicle. She crossed over a road and is now in the bush heading somewhere roughly towards us. She could pop out at any stage, so help us to find her, please. As Brian pans through this thick vegetation, we need all the help we can get to spot her. 
And I wonder who's going to spot her first. We may get some help from squirrels or Franklin that may detect her as she moves, and that'll help us pinpoint where she could be moving, but at the moment it's dead silence. He's got a big smile on his face waiting in anticipation. So do I. As leopards, as well as lion, as they move through thick vegetation, they'll often stop and assess their surroundings, making sure there's no potential threats, as well as making sure there's no potential prey. If they were to charge through thick vegetation, they would blunder many opportunities and also possibly get themselves into trouble, especially for leopard. Leopard don't want to bump into pride of lion, even wild dogs or a clan of hyena. They could get themselves into a spot of bother, so they will be very cautious. The general direction of movements has been north and west which makes sense as to why she would have crossed over the road that she did because that road runs exactly east-west but she is still heading towards us and I have just seen Aubrey's vehicle off-roading in the general area where Brian is scanning with the camera so prospects he can stay with her and keep an eye on her as she moves towards us and he'll continue to update us as he has been as to what exactly she is doing and it seems like she may have already moved a little bit further north of where we are so we shall reposition and stand by in another place such good prospects. Mark following fresh leopard tracks, possibly Kunyuma or Quarantine, I would guess, judging by the area that those tracks are moving in. But who knows, it could be a surprise. Either way, the last leopard we saw was on Tuesday. <clears throat> that was the only one we saw last week. And I'm hoping this week our leopard luck changes and we have an influx of sightings. Maybe this termite mound that you can see is going to be a landmark that she could head towards. Leopard will often move from termite mound to termite mound and use them as vantage points. on which they can survey their surroundings. If she does creep up over this termite mound, it'll be absolutely beautiful. They often get into full stalk mode and almost slither up the back of a mound and we'll just get her eyes and ears poking up carefully, making sure she doesn't give herself away to anything that could be on the opposite side. Now I'm hoping Aubrey hasn't lost her in this thick vegetation. There's a chance he has. But that's not a problem. I'm confident we'll find her. We've got a long stretch of straight road that I'm fairly confident we'll spot her on as she crosses. Even if it's behind us, I'm searching in a 180 degree kind of vector in the general direction that she's been moving. Brian, did you get a glimpse of her as she crossed the road earlier? Mm -mm. Oh, no, it's okay. So it's, both of us haven't seen her yet, but we know she's nearby. And like many scenarios we face, Archer, patience can be our best friend and we will continue to be patient and it is going to certainly be worth waiting for, I can assure you. When we do 
lay eyes on this female leopard with this perfect golden morning sunlight. We are going to be in for a treat. The bird you can hear calling is a very pretty bird, and I'm going to open this one up to the floor. Can anybody ID the bird that's calling? I'll imitate the call with a whistle just so that you're sure of the same one. It's kind of my impression. They'll call again now. There you go. It's a very, very pretty bird with bright colors. That is the only clues I will give you. So send your answers to questions at wildearth.tv or hashtag Safari Live on Twitter. And in the birding world, it is actually accepted to identify a bird. It counts as of an identification or a sighting, you could say by simply identifying its call. You don't necessarily need to lock eyes on it. This is the long straight road that she could pop out onto. Uh, have you still got a visual of her, Orbs? They are positive, changing the direction, heading east again. Let's do this now. Uh oh. <laughs> but I still pull <laughs> Okay, copy, thank you. We'll still wait here. Well, if you didn't hear that message from Aubrey, I'll relay it to you, and it's not the best news we've heard all morning. She's changed direction, and from being so close to us, she is now heading in the opposite <laughs> direction. But she could, well, just change direction again and keep coming. Her general direction of movement has been towards us. What would have caused her to change direction could be a number of many things. She could have smelt some prey, got the sense of another leopard, or simply just changed her mood. Huh. Well, apologies. I really was excited about the prospects of her popping up. And there still is a chance that she will. Like I say, her general movements has been consistently bringing her closer to this boundary road. And just at the last moment, she's veered off track. And the animals always do keep us guessing out here. And that's what makes it exciting and fun. And the good news is that Aubrey is still with her. And that is fundamental. So the fact that there is still somebody with her who can keep us updated on her movements is huge. But again, we're just going to have to put on our extra patience because we don't really have another option. Patience is our only option. and listen, you'll notice that this termite mound has got almost a chimney-like structure. And that's exactly what it is. It helps to regulate the temperature within, inside this termite mound. And there's a hive of activity in there. There's basically an indoor farming system where the termites will farm a fungus which actually helps to break down their own feces so they'll consume the dead plant matter which is very hard to break down and then deliver their droppings into a farming area you can say almost cultivated fields of fungus and this fungus that 
grows on and breaks down their feces and their droppings is then fed on by them. So it allows them to feed twice on the same substance, but the fungus helps to break it down to a more digestible matter. Now, all the farming and all this digestion and breaking down and decomposing by the fungus creates a lot of energy and warmth. And this warmth can either be kept with inside the termite mound by keeping that hole that you can see in the chimney closed, or they can open it up to let things cool down a bit inside there. And there can be millions and millions of termites within one mound. Basically a whole world yeah. of activity going on in there. Yeah, maybe she's going to come back here in seven months, but she still is for a long time. Okay, copy. Thanks, Orbs. Thanks very much for your help. Okay, folks, well, it sounds like she's following the trail of some steenbuck that she chased off, and we're not sure what she's going to do. It might be worth heading back over to see how Mark's coming along with his tracks and tracking, and I'm going to chat with Aubrey now. He's just right here and get a better idea of exactly what he thinks is going to happen. We'll catch up with you a bit later. like it was very frustrating. Karula almost there but turning around and then heading in another direction is quite sad. I've been on the trail of one of her sons. At the moment I don't have tracks because it looks like he crossed into an area between between Philemon's cut line and Zoe's road and Rebecca's road. This is quite a large area so we can do a, a little bit of a loop around and it might get us past the hyena den so we might hop in there and have a look. Uh, but the only option that we have is to try and head up here and see if he comes out onto this road after he came up from Treehouse Dam. We followed his tracks all the way down to Treehouse Dam and then from Treehouse Dam. So he sort of came down the one road to Treehouse Dam and then almost did a 90 degree and went up the other road, clearly stopping at the dam for a drink, no doubt, because of the angle of, the, of his trajectory, of his movement. And that will bring him out somewhere maybe onto this road closer to the hyena den. So the only chance we have right now is to try and find his track coming up onto this road. And of course, see what else we can see along the way. You never know what there is. Welcome to our sunrise safari, a beautiful Monday morning. Starting to warm up a little bit. Little patches of cloud keeping the sun faint. But it is managing to warm things up a bit.
kilograms. I mean, very, very big males, maybe 90 kilograms. Female leopards are maybe 40 to 40, 35, 40 kilograms. So up to half the weight of a male leopard. Male leopards, bigger bone. They'll probably stand a good few inches taller and obviously a lot more robust than the females. What have we got here? Some tracks apart from buffalo. There are...
for the old hyena den. sleeping in the road 
and somehow they must have avoided each other. Perhaps a time thing. The cats went that way round down to Gary Main. He came up a little bit west of them, and the timing must have been that when the cats were leaving, he was coming in. Whether they were vocal or not, I don't know. Uh, I certainly didn't, couldn't, wouldn't have heard anything since I was staying up in Manuleti. Uh, oh, wait, just on the chassis. Just looking now, quickly, before I turn around. I can actually see where he's come onto the road. Just in front of us here, he came out of the bush right here. Onto the road right here. So he would have come from almost due north from Treehouse Dam where he came out on Spam Road. And his tracks come onto Rebecca's Road right here. And we're going to turn around and we're going to go back and see if he went up towards Impala Plains. Or I think he might have crossed through because there was nothing on the junction up there. I think he would have made a shortcut through here onto Zoe's Road, which means that he would have headed up Zoe's Road and then eventually got to Impala uh, Sandy Patch maybe or Aubrey's Road. Uh, exciting that we've still got his tracks to follow. need to chat to Scott quickly. Scott, Scott, come in. Uh, you wanted me? Yeah, I'm just wondering, I thought it's on those tracks, Mark, so I can come and give you a hand. Gorilla turned around at the last moment. I'm looking for the tracks. Sounds great. I've just picked up his tracks again on Rebecca's Road. He must have crossed through from Spam Road, past the old, past the Ayn, and then coming out onto Rebecca's, heading northwest on Rebecca's. I'm going to go and see if he comes out onto Zoe's. I, uh, where are you now?
your feet dangling many, 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 many times, Alan. Don't forget elephant, I've still got leopard tracks. myself were racing over towards Mark and the leopard tracks in order to try and give him a hand but we stumbled upon this little family of dwarf mongoose and they're such cool little animals especially when they are so close to us we've got a great view of them and they're just starting their day off slowly warming up in the sun and they would have spent their night sleeping in this old termite mound we've seen about four or five so far but they scurrying about and hard to keep track of and it's also going back in and out of the burrows but it appears like the main chamber where they're all coming out of is in the center of the shot now. And three have just popped out of there in the last few minutes, and I wonder if many more will. some good news there were three correct answers for the bird that was calling earlier and it was a black headed oriole that we could hear calling while we were waiting for the leopard that didn't ever arrive sadly so a very well done to Joanne Georgian and Diane you are the three winners of this morning's bird call quiz and it really is impressive that some of our viewers may never have been to Africa yet have got such a great knowledge of what goes on here and it certainly does keep us on our toes As wonderful as the sighting is, folks, it sounds like Mark has found something equally interesting over where he is. And we're going to cut over to him, and then Brian and I will be able to make our way into that area to help him also follow up on the leopard tracks. I'm as sure a lot of us are also desperate to see a leopard. It's been too long, and we need to head over there. So over to Mark, and we will catch up with you a little bit later. decided to 
run off. There's a whole family of Wootog, and the mama and piglets are fine next to us, but he's taken off. Now, I have to tell you that our young male leopard has come all the way here to Impala Plains, and as he got to the open area, he left the road, and I was watching these Wootogs. I wasn't sure if he left to the left or if he left to the right. Impala are having a good sparring session, so they're a little bit engrossed. The Wootog are, are safe. They're out here in the open. And there's no way that a leopard is going to be able to get to one of these Wootog. But I'm wondering if he isn't somewhere around the edge of this open area watching these Impala. There's quite intense sparring going on. There was also a harrier hawk, African harrier hawk in the background. So a little bit of a dilemma. Do we go and look for the tracks leading away from the open area or do we just sit and watch what's going on here for the time being? If he carried on going west, he would have crossed over into... Oh, there's that piglet now, a big male... Wootogs running back the other way. But that's because there was a car on Triple M. He's obviously a very shy big bull. Just hiding away. Bachelor group of Impala are all engaging and that's possibly a target for a leopard because they get so busy with each other they don't see what's going on around them so much what's interesting is you can see the two grooming each other in the foreground they were sparring just a few seconds ago and they've stopped sparring and now they're doing a little bit of elo grooming at this time of the year because they've got a they've got a challenge dominant males for access to females and then fortunately for them they can practice their sparring and spend time feeding and build up their muscles and build up strength whereas the ram that's in charge of the females will be losing a lot of muscle losing strength because he spends all his day chasing ma males away and mating with females and doesn't get time to look after himself. Okay, so I'm going to roll a little forward. Have a look at this. No, we've got no gravity drive today. We've used it all up. we have here are the two small piglets which would have been born around December so they're only about six months old and their mom who's this very big female she's got a magnificent set of tusks and you can also see as she's eating she looks like she's maybe broken the lower left tusk but her lower right tusk is quite solid and then the other piglet off to the side, that's a daughter, probably going on two years old now, or maybe 18 months, maybe even two and a half years old, but a daughter from a previous litter that sticks around to help out with the new litter. The big bull running again. He's just nervous, I think. The Impala have left the Impala Plains. They moved off, probably because it's starting to get warm time for them to head into the bush for feeding. There's something not right here.
final control on the radio there. Just got a tweet in from Diane. Thank you, Diane. Very interesting news saying that Kuma quarantine killed a warthog on Simbambili and that it was stolen by a lion. Now, I've just seen a vehicle going by on Triple M. Simbambili is directly, I mean, straight ahead of us across Triple M. And this is where his tracks have been heading. So I'm pretty sure that that is where our leopard is. And maybe one of the reasons why that big male warthog is so nervous like that, because maybe he heard the squealing. And evidently, Q male is walking straight into Zimbabwe where there was a pride of lion, and I guess I'm trying to who, I wonder who, maybe one of the, the Talala breakaways even, maybe Birmingham, don't know. I'm going to have to see if I can find out some other way. But that would be somewhere up ahead of us. And that's just in line with the direction that his tracks have been walking in northwest, in a northwesterly direction straight from Treehouse Dam. So I'm still going to see where his tracks crossed, and I'll probably be able to go and find them crossing Triple M as well, which is our western boundary. Thanks for that news. Warthog squeal when they're getting caught. There's no, it's very difficult to keep them quiet because they squeal almost before they even get caught. They squeal in anticipation. Uh, if it was a male warthog, uh, it was probably a pretty heavy fight for quarantine male to have caught a male warthog. This is what I'm, I'm led to believe. And that squealing probably is what attracted lion's attention. Now, this just sort of reflects on what we were saying earlier, uh, the question whether the leopards had not been in the area because the lion were here. Now, lion have very large territories, and within the lion's territory, you're going to find several leopards' territories. And leopard know that they live within the lion's territory. And obviously there are times when they can hear lion and they can avoid them. But there are also times when nature just puts them in the same place. And it's unavoidable maybe because they didn't know the lion were there. And this is, seems to be the case now with quarantine male. Found himself after walking all the way from Little Gari, crossing Gari, Western Gari, or crossing Juma the way he did, and finding himself on an on the sort of northwestern sector of his territory, of his the range that he covers, only to have his kill stolen by a pride of lion there, even if he was trying to avoid the lion here. Bye-bye, Mrs. Pig and Piglets. We'll see you later. We're going to just head up towards Sandy Patch.
might have been pilot planes. I'm checking Sandy Patch South now, heading up to Sandy Patch to see if he comes out here. Otherwise, I'm going to have to check on Triple M. Welcome back everyone and 
despite the leopards taking us on a run around this morning, that run around has brought us into an area which helped us find these elephants. And this is a small herd that we are getting to know. We saw them yesterday morning. And it's very distinctive because the trunk that you're looking at is distinctively shorter than it should be. It lacks the prehensile fingertip. She's lost the end of her trunk, this cow. And it's interesting. It's just a herd of three of them. It's probably two of her previous offspring. And although the young bull, the smallest of her calves, is nursing and trying to nurse, I think it might actually be nursing right now. It's quite old and I'm surprised that she's allowing it to nurse. We also saw them yesterday afternoon, but there were no vehicles there. It was just the Juma waterhole cam that alerted us to their presence. As I was saying though, the youngster that is nursing is quite old. It looks to be about two years old, possibly a bit more than that. And he's been having some temper tantrums when his mother doesn't allow him to nurse. But she's given in this morning. Yesterday morning was quite different and he was letting off the odd shriek. Expressing his frustration as to not being allowed to drink milk. And here he's trying again. Let's see what happens. <laughs> You're too old now, buddy. The trunk is missing ever so slightly, a little piece off the end, which is a very useful part of their trunk. It allows them to pick up the smallest of things. They could even pick up a peanut with their prehensile fingertips. She lacks these. Morning. Hello. She is very close to us. We're just hoping to find some food nearby. This is an incredibly hard piece of wood that she's just broken off, but look at the texture of that skin. It's really beautiful in the morning sunlight. Marianne in Arkansas, good morning. Marianne's interested to know some behavior that she witnessed on a previous drive with the young elephant that lifted its trunk up towards the vehicle and, and smelt us and then continued to put the trunk into its mouth. And she's wondering if by putting the trunk into its mouth it would be helping to taste or sample the, the smell that it picked up from us. And I think it was more of just a funny maneuver rather than helping to, to better process our smell. Their trunk is essentially just an extension of their nose. It's just a very long column of nostrils, really. And by just smelling the air, that would have picked up enough information for it to work out what it wanted to. And I think by putting its trunk in its mouth, it was just a display of sorts, and young elephants will sometimes 
put their trunk in their mouth for a lack of a better place to put it. separated from what they would normally be in a larger herd than this. Who knows what it could be. It isn't hugely uncommon though for animals that do live communally to occasionally break off and do their own thing. But it is interesting that it appears for almost the last 48 hours these three have been alone. position the vehicle it's quite thick vegetation in here and I'm not sure how lucky we're going to be but it's definitely worth it to try so hold on and let's see if we can get you some better views we may have one last moment with them before the vegetation gets a bit too thick elephant probably in a few moments passing through a little open clearing as he follows the rest of the herd there we go there he's putting his trunk into his mouth again and it could just be a habit I guess Thing. Exactly, per perhaps a pacifying effect as Brian's just suggested. Just like humans sucking their thumb, a go to maneuver when you're not sure what else to do. find it interesting how silently they can move through the vegetation and also how they can disappear they are huge animals but can so quickly dissolve and blend into the environment that they live in which certainly makes things interesting when you are on foot and next thing you know there's a wall of elephants in front of you beginning to heat up they will start to flap their ears more readily they pump liters and liters of blood through their ears every minute and that's their cooling system those massive ears are not for hearing purposes it's for cooling purposes so it's an animal that's adapted with some really strange improvements it's extended nose that it can use as an extra limb to help feed and those gigantic ears that actually don't help hearing but they in fact are the cooling system Chris in Washington, good morning. Chris would like to know, what does elephant skin feel like? And as you can tell, just by the way it looks, it's quite rough in some sections, very deeply textured. But 
but in certain parts of the body, I guess, in the armpits where there's a lot of friction and rubbing, it can be exceptionally smooth. So depending on where exactly you are feeling on an elephant, it will impact on the smoothness and the texture of the skin. I've only felt an elephant once, and that was at a rehabilitation center which rescued elephants from disturbed areas. And it was a beautiful young bull, he was about 25 years old, and it was really incredible to be able to touch and feel inside the mouth, feel the trunk, and get an understanding of how they feel. But that was only once off. And as you can see, the elephants have disappeared into some thick vegetation. We'll leave them to carry on searching for food. It's a never-ending quest for elephants, really. And we will continue and see what else we can find. Even though the leopards have taken us on a bit of a run around this morning, it's not the end of the world and at least there are some leopard tracks on our property we've really been battling the last few days with very very few signs of leopards oh, didn't feel too good it's over a little stump there but it should be fine for sending your question through. Jojo would like to know, do mother elephants take good care of their young and would they ever lose them potentially in a herd? I find it highly, highly unlikely that an elephant would ever lose its calf. They take immense, immense care and affection towards their youngsters. And that's actually what makes elephant cows one of the more dangerous animals to encounter out here. They are so protective over their young that they will attack anything that gets in the way of them. And very often young elephant calves will seldom leave their mother's side. They will always be at her feet. They don't tend to drift too far away until they get a little bit older like this young bull that we've just seen who's about I'm guessing around two years old two and a half years old at that stage they'll start to spend more time away from their mother but still stay relatively nearby but when they're small they literally do not leave their mother's side and it's really beautiful to see elephant cows and the affection they have especially for newborn calves I've only seen it once when we arrived probably a few minutes or potentially within an hour of a young elephant being born and there were six or seven cows all encompassing head to head this tiny little calf and they all had their trunks holding the calf up helping it take its first steps it was incredible to witness but I've only seen that once driving down is a road quite close to where Mark's been searching for this leopard. I was hoping that the leopard may have changed track and veered towards this road. Its general direction of movement was not, in fact, in this direction, but it's the closest place that we can possibly search. hyena tracks moving in this general direction maybe they know something that we don't I'm just going to stop here and check this road junction very carefully I'll just be a minute or two to make sure there's nothing that we've missed over here
well, no luck. But tracking is kind of a process of elimination a lot of the time, so by establishing that an animal did not move in one area, it kind of helps you close off that specific part of the reserve and it allows us to head off and search a new area. decipher what this leopard has done and even by just concentrating our efforts this morning in trying to find out where it's gone it will help in this afternoon's drive if we were to just give up on the tracks then we'd be starting off this afternoon on the back foot essentially interesting stuff to hear about quarantine and what he's been up to in the last 24 hours that as far as I'm aware it's as Mark would have discussed with you it sounds like he managed to catch a warthog but that was stolen from him by lions wouldn't that be incredible to see and it really is interesting it would be in very interesting to know leopard come across line and how often it's just a matter of seconds that separates them from living and dying because if lion get a hold of a leopard the leopard doesn't stand much of a chance thankfully though leopard are masters of disappearing and also great climbers so they have the refuge of the trees through from Susan. Morning Susan. And Susan would like to know any updates we have on Karula and the potential of her having cubs. Not sure what noises I heard there but we can just stop and listen for a while. Um, Susan there's been some very interesting information on Karula in the last week or so. Basically we got a report on, I think, Monday or Tuesday from one of the guides that he had seen her with suckle rings, nursing rings around her nipples, indicating that she would have had cubs. Now, nobody saw the cubs, and the only report that I got was that she was seen with suckling rings. The very next day, we got a report that she was mating with Tingana, a male leopard. Now, interestingly enough, we did get some feedback from one of our long-term viewers who remembered that on Karula's third litter, she did a very similar thing. She had given birth, but she was seen mating with the male leopard shortly afterwards. It was for a short period of time then. Leopardess will sometimes do this to give men the false impression that they are actually the father of those cubs. Now, the reason why she'd want to do that is that would prevent that leopard from killing cubs that are not his own which is what male leopards will do so that they can get their genes into the system. So it's one of actually the biggest killers of leopard cubs. It's other male leopard that did not father them. Now, what is different about her mating with Tingana this time, as opposed to the last time she was seen mating when she did actually have cubs, was that she continued to mate with Tingana for about two or three days, which means that she either didn't have cubs in the first place or possibly lost the cubs very shortly after she gave birth to them and leopard can almost immediately mate with males once they have lost their cubs because their next step will be trying to raise the next litter and they won't waste any time about that so who knows possibly it means that she's lost her last two litters that she's given birth to and that's after having I think raised five or six litters successfully so 
It looks like her luck may have turned. Anyway, time will tell. We nearly got to see her this morning, and that would have been great. We could have made some assumptions of our own. And even though we didn't, there's still a chance we could find her around Buffalo Dam this afternoon. So that's good prospects for this afternoon and a part of as in-depth of an update as I can give you, Susan. But again, this is all going on what we've heard, not what we've actually seen. to know if the big cats use their vision and sense of smell to predominantly find prey or will they also follow tracks um, I think it's only their hearing their vision and their sense of smell that they use in order to find prey and I've never actually noticed any of the predators looking down at tracks their other senses are far greater and they can probably smell an animal that's walked down a road more easily than actually fo following its tracks visually so they either see their prey hear their prey or smell their prey or another in, in actual fact see hear or smell any other potential threats to them not only their prey where is the bird that's making this noise both scanning, but I can't see it. Can you see it, Brian? Wow. It appears that we have a little work on our hands here. It's so close. But where is it hiding? to see here well done Brian and I believe you've already seen one of Mark this morning so two Koki Franklin and one drive I guess they filled up the slots of the two leopards that we were hoping at seeing at one stage <laughs> Karuna was so close to us I mean we could see the vehicle there and Mark was on steaming hot leopard tracks. So Brian and I thought, well, this is going to be a jackpot second half to the drive. We're going to be switching between two leopards, depending on which is performing the best. But in fact, it turns out they've evaded us. Two Koki Franklins, though. Two Koki Franklins, though. Exactly. We probably see more leopard than Koki Franklins, to be honest. So we're trying to get some equilibrium out here. Not far 
beloved by him, would she in fact mate with him? And yes, there's a strong chance that she would. because I don't want it to fly away. They are such pretty birds, the hornbills. This is a red-billed hornbill. It's the smallest hornbill we get out here. And like a lot of other animals this morning, it's enjoying basking in the morning sun. The evenings are quite chilly. Days in winter are almost always sunny with blue skies. Just been taking the last few seconds to try and listen as intently as I can to the bush us. There's a lot of different birds calling. Oh, and there goes the red-billed hornbill. And we are still in an area where this leopard that Mark has been tracking could pop out at any given stage. And Listening can often be one of the greatest tools in finding leopard because we rely on different animals to alarm call and lead us into where they could be moving. Didn't you hear anything there though? wondering if Karula has in fact lost her, lost her two litters, previous litters. Is she getting a bit too old for the job now? And no, I don't think she is. Leopard can be very unlucky when it comes to raising cubs. I know of a leopard that lived to about eight years of old, so she died very young. The female can live up to 20 years of age. Anyway, this specific female attempted to raise six or seven litters and did not manage to successfully raise one cub. She was eventually injured when she made a water kill and it sliced one of her front paws basically in half. And that injury she couldn't recover from and she slowly withered away after having not raised one cub to adulthood and interestingly enough the main animal killing her cubs was male leopards and at that stage there was a lot of disruption amongst the male leopards and there was new males coming, <coughs> excuse me, coming and going through her territory which made life difficult for her because there was always different males that wanted to sire her cubs and again, I just think it's been bad luck more than anything that Karula's lost, uh, definitely her last litter in December. What's happened now more recently, we're not too sure of exactly yet. But she's certainly got a few more years in her before 
she starts getting too old to be a good mother, I think. continue searching for anything interesting for you guys let's catch up with Mark and see how he's coming along we'll see you later well welcome back we're on Sandy Patch heading up towards Sandy Patch we just left a pile of planes I reluctantly have had to give up on that leopard I went back to where I last saw his tracks and I was walking around trying to ascertain where he had gone from there. He, he, it's almost as though he walked down the middle of the road and it's a nice sandy road. It's, 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 there's no grassy patch in the middle as there is here. And, well, I know that I must have driven over one or two of his tracks, but it, it, there's a point where I just cannot find where he left the road, whether it was to the left or the right. Quite clearly, it's at some point around the edge of the pile of planes. He must have come out onto his pile of planes and actually stopped looking out onto the open area. They were in parlor there. Here comes Scott. They were in parlor there. And the warthog are grazing. The warthog are still quite busy. Looking now there's some in parlor further back that I saw a minute ago. A second ago. I just wanted to see if they weren't maybe feeding, they're doing fine. I'm going to play chicken. <laughs> Morning, Hello, Scott. Brian. Hello, Brian. So, okay, so his track, just telling everybody, his tracks came Spam Road down to the dam, back up to Philemon's cut line, yeah. cut through, we could see where he came out onto Rebecca's Road, Okay. just above where the lion were, actually. Yeah. So he, he, it must have been after they left anyway. And then all the way up Rebecca's Road to the edge of Impala Plains, and if you go up from Impala Plains, you'll actually see where I drew my foot. That's the last okay. track that I got of him. Couldn't find anything on Triple M, except the leopard tracks that we saw yesterday when we turned in to go look for the, the Ellies on, on, on Arathusa. Just as well you knew about those ones from yesterday. Yeah, yeah. Because they do confusing. look quite fresh on the edge, especially being Triple M, and you know how the cars drive up yeah. and down the edge of track differently. I, quite, I haven't seen anything here. I did come up and down here a little bit. So he didn't come out onto this road. He didn't go out onto Triple M. There is a bachelor herd of Impala just here on the northern edge of the open area. And then there's a Wartog family on the southern end. So I don't know whether he's hiding out somewhere. Okay. And he's watching Impala. There's but also there's some reading... leopard tracks on the property. Yes. <laughs> So good prospects for some it, time. I don't know if you heard that, but evidently Diane said that quarantine had been on some Bambili. Yeah. Killed a, a war dog there yesterday. Which is Which stolen by lion. Yeah. Because when I heard that, I thought, oh, well, maybe that's him because he was coming up from Treehouse and that's a straight line to some Bambili. But it's obviously that this must be Konyuma then if quarantine was already on some Bambili. That sounds... Like it could be the case. But we're going to have to find it to make sure. We are. So good luck. We've only got Thank a few you. more minutes. Uh, <laughs> See you later. Cool, bye. See you for breakfast. Man. Yes. See you later. So there you have it. And uh, after around for three hours. It's strange that we've met up again. But Scott was going to be coming to help with these tracks and unfortunately, well, there just doesn't seem to be any sign of him coming out onto this road. We'll see whether Scott came from Sandy Patch or whether he came down the power line. If he came from Sandy Patch, I'll head down the power line and get back towards through my access, we tele access road. to get 
an elephant was spun earlier. drive watching this African Harrier Hawk fluttering about trying to catch and ride a hot thermal of air spiraling up off the earth as it does warm up today as you can see it's still flapping quite a lot so not the most efficient flight but that's because it is still cool and you'll find a lot of the birds of prey will only start thinking about flying now that it is becoming warmer they rely on the hot air thermals to float effortless, effortlessly and efficient, efficiently we've seen the same type of bird digging into cavities of trees trying to pluck out potential prey and that's how they hunt so maybe it's looking for a tree with some potential cavities in which to search for some food, they'll pluck uh, small chicks out of nests and reptiles taking refuge in logs. Well, it's been an exciting morning, but sadly a lot of the excitement has finished in disappointment because the leopards that we were hoping to see didn't pop up, but that's all part of the adventure. And we still did get to see some great other animals along the way, and it's always fun coming out and sharing whatever happens out here with you the viewers so thanks for signing in thanks to brian and camera good to be teamed up with you again and to nikki and tara in final control thanks very much we'll leave you with a few last shots of the warthog as we say goodbye